Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum salam rahmatullah How can we be more conscious of our breath according to the first Naqshbandi principle, especially when working, studying, driving and other daily activities? <clears throat> How to be more conscious of our breath based on the first principle, khush dardan. On Mawlana Shah Naqshband's 11 principles of the turuq and all in the Naqshbandi way that Mawlana wrote, all the shaykhs describe that this tariqah it's built upon the breath. And interesting that nobody teaches about the breath which is again all about the tafakkur and what we spoke about tonight. That how to be conscious of our breath means how to first level is how to be conscious of even the process of breathing. That it's not just a, something that we do and it comes and goes. Our life is based on this breath. What we call nafas of rahmah and the breath of mercy is that our existence that Allah has given to us is based on this breath. All the things you want in life makes no difference for Allah if we don't base our life on thanking Him for what He gave us. He gave us this existence. So it means to be conscious of our breath is that with every breath in and out in a state of consciousness and praise. That Ya Rabbi and that's why you say, continuously saying, Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbi shukran lillah, shukran lillah. Thank you for everything and some people may say, why you keep saying shukran lillah? It's between nobody but you and Allah It's to be shukran and thankful for the existence that Allah has given to us. When we understood that, then we understood even more the necessity to meditate and tafakkur. Because as soon as you meditate and contemplate, one is to make your connection. Once you've understood how to make your connection, next level is that you're going to meditate on the breath. And the Ya Rabbi please dress me from the ocean of power. This ocean of reality that all around me in every direction as I'm breathing in, I want to breathe in from your qudra and your light and power. And as that light comes in, every breath that comes out, Ya Rabbi make all my falsehood to be out and all negativity to be taken from me. So they breathe in the light and the Divinely power and they exhale all their negativity. And that's why Prophet described that, don't breathe into your drink, that take your… and you're supposed to move it, exhale and then again because of the negative energy that coming out of our exhale. So when we're meditating we're asking for this light to come and breathe with this qudra and exhale all its negativity. And then we practice that more and becomes more and more powerful and Allah want to begin to send the energy of that breath. And when they begin to unlock the reality that breath comes like a Divine fire into their soul. When they breathe in that energy and the qudra, they have the, the secret of who within every nafas. The reality of that oxygen that coming and Allah send from paradise realities their breath. Like a mask be put over the believer that they breathe from their paradise reality. And as they're breathing in it's a qudra that dresses their soul and they begin to heat up. And as they exhale out every badness and bad characteristic and then they fill themselves with this Divine Qudra and Divine lights and Divine energies. With that energy then that is a, is a immense reality of their breath. And when they reach these understandings every zikr they're doing has an immense Qudra and power because their breath has been activated. And as a result when they make their salawat they feel the immense energy and fire within them for every salawat, for every dhikr of Allah for listening to Qur'an, to listening to salawat, everything will be powered for that servant, inshaAllah. <clears throat>
These oceans are immensely deep and it, it can't be understood in just uh, five minutes. But it is described in the book and the timeless reality and all of these tafakkur questions and like an encyclopedia, 500 pages or so of all these realities of tafakkur which you can't find anywhere now. There's nothing written anywhere on tafakkur and contemplation. And if anyone following Mawlana Shaykh Nazim and Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dabastani, Sultan al Awliya, then you have to read from these readings. There are groups that are Naqshbandi, Mujaddidi, but they are not written according to Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dabastani. The lataifs are in something other than what we understood and what we were trained by their presence. So, stick with your school and stick with your shaykhs on what they taught and what they revealed as our understanding and belief is that they're the sultan and awliyas. If, if anyone understood something it would be the king of kings of what was conveyed to their heart and alhamdulillah Allah gave that ni'mat to be from that chain. So the levels of the heart book is based on Shaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani's teachings, the colors and the layout. So you study from someone else and they're putting posts on the internet, the seat is here, the, the aqaf is there, khafa, khafa, they have everything listed, they have something nafsi, ruhi, don't know what that is. Nor have we seen it, nor has it been verified for us, but what we were conveyed and what we were taught and what Mawlana Shaykh taught to us is in these books. And the qudra, the breathing, the energy and what worked for them and achieved their stations, what was conveyed and taught to us inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi Ya Sayyidi <coughs> Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Is there a reality behind the sunnah of the kohol, the eyes? Is there what? Is there a reality behind the sunnah of the, the kohol for the eyes? Oh. Of course there's a reality of the sunnah of the kohol, <laughs> okay, it's Prophet <laughs> has to be a, a deep reality of the sunnah of putting the, the kohol on the eyes. Everything that Prophet brought are the treasures of paradise. So alhamdulillah everything, everything. That's why in, in our adab and, and their adab is, is uh, oceans apart. If somebody says something da'if we find these all to be very insulting. If even the saliva of Prophet is wahi. So you can, the word and the kalam of what Sayyidina Muhammad brought never touches the ground. If they can't understand its teachings or they can't understand what was been conveyed then the living heart can. So they can take a teaching and understand through their living heart that vibrating and connecting to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad on its understanding and under its expansion of its reality. That Prophet taught like footnotes, that three, four points that if you were to recite it with a living heart he would expand its understanding and that's why these hadiths that Naqshbandiya use they are like oceans, you could write thousands of books from one hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad and if you lived by it, who knows himself, arafa nafsihu, will know his Lord, arafa rabbuhu. That itself you can write a thousand books and that's your dalil for tariqah, that's the dalil for muraqabah, that's the dalil for every reality. That to take a path and to know your nafs, to know your soul, to know your reality, to know your desires and that it would lead you to arif rabbuhu, that rabb and who. Rabb is that who is governing you from your low desires all the way up to the governance of yourself and then the governance of the heavenly kingdom and into the presence of the reality of who. 
So these are oceans that are, are not understood and, and have no limit. In the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad has no beginning and no end in its infinite capacity inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Is there a correlation of the soul and the, and the aura and the color of a person's eyes? What? <laughs> Is there a relationship between the soul and the aura and their aura and the color, and the color of their eyes? Good question, <laughs> but I haven't the understanding. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi <laughs> What is the reality of the grave, the qabr? The reality of the grave? InshaAllah what's the reality of the grave? InshaAllah we'll, what Allah write for us of good actions that reality to be good. And that the grave is, is the great equalizer on, on what going to annihilate everybody. Like the soil that we describe everybody is a seed and Allah wants them to enter into the soil. Enter into your grave so that Allah can bring out your reality. Your seed is not your reality but it's a flower, it's a plant that should have many fruits on it. Allah created everyone with an immense reality if they were to reach to it. But if people choose to remain a seed in life then the grave is the great equalizer in which is going to be cast into that so that they can reach their reality. And that becomes the difficulty of the grave to separate all of the things that insan takes into the grave with them of their dunya where the dunya has no place in that reality. As a result the dunya has to be pulled from that reality and pulled apart and that becomes the difficulty of the grave. Better to have our difficulty in our wakeful state, in our contemplation and meditation because we don't need to be pulled apart in the grave where it's difficult. On our physical life we sit and separate these understandings, separate the dunya from the heart, do the spiritual practices so that the grave becomes something of a beatific reality when the servant enters into it because the cleaning was done on top. Then they go in as, as a reality, as an entire fruit, as an entire plant, as, as what Allah wanted them to achieve, they're entering into the grave with that achievement and Allah then expands inshaAllah their grave to be a, a, a piece of paradise for them inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Do we prepare for a time with no electricity? If yes, how do we do it? Do we prepare now for a time of no electricity and how do we do it? If, if you have the ability you, you have to have a life of preparedness in which you have food in your home and supplies within your home in the event of the power going out. So if people have the ability to stock food and to place items of food, use it and then replenish it, alhamdulillah Mawlana Shaykh's teaching was to have your home like a little market in which you have the supplies and you keep refer putting in supplies and using them. And what you can for power, for lanterns, if there is no power, for, for whatever life's necessities are needed. But to be overly scared about the issue then is a, is a concern with faith that you are where Allah wants you to be. And you prepare and the rest is left for the blessings of what Allah will support for the servant. But to be scared and have lack of faith and then shaitan now even plays on these issues of faith and begin to tell the servant, oh how are you going to live, how are you going to live with this, how much gas do you need for power, how much this you need for power, how much you need for the food, how much… That becomes its own source of fear and shaitan has now entered into those practices. 
everybody to their ability and to have a, a level of moderation of whatever they can afford. They put food, batteries, lanterns and their preparedness. The rest is Allah's blessings to be upon that servant. And we described even from the unseen kingdoms will come to support insan. If Allah wants to support them, Allah will send support for these servants. It's not that they have to prepare everything and stockpile everything. That stockpiling is also a sense of fear. When you watch these shows of these uh, preparers or, or what they're called, these, these people who are preparing for Armageddon, it, it's more like they're preparing to live a thousand years on this dunya. So that's its own dunya weird sort of reality that is appearing. When you look at their, their life, these preparers or whatever they're called, they have 10,000 cans of beans, 10,000 this, 10,000 this, as if they're going to live now a thousand years on these beans. So they took their dunya desire and shifted into something weird for akhirah and that's not necessary, they don't need that. They buy everything just to show their faith and that they believe difficulties are coming and Allah will expand the rest and provide for the servants whom He wants. Said many from unseen will come to provide for these servants and teach them from their kingdom how to prepare food when there is no food. Said that awliyaullah will activate at that time and this unseen kingdom will come to show even how they can put energy over somebody and protect them from a direct attack of a nuclear bomb. Awliya will release their energy over entire peoples and that energy will shield them from all these difficulties are coming. So these are not things that even the mind can comprehend. Other kingdom will come to show how they can bring food from the ground according to different understandings from that kingdom. So Allah is, is the best of those to prepare and Allah is, is the best of those for the believer to put their faith and trust. So these are our signs of faith with the believer has nothing in their closet, it's like they got caught with their pants down, why you have nothing? You have to have a level of belief in which you prepared. You can't just say, oh I didn't know this was going to happen. No, it's going to happen. Now do you buy the entire market and put it in your backyard? No. And start digging up all your backyard to, to, to hide, you know, the meat that you want to eat and the, the crackers you want. So everything in moderation is that the understanding you take one step and Allah will come 99 steps towards His servant. But the one step is the most important that when they look to our house these supplies are there. When they look to our practices we are preparing for these days of difficulty. And that's why the meditation, the zikr, the salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad So it's not important if you find out where juj and majuj are hiding because you don't want to go dig them out. You know you're hoping they forget every day not to say Bismillahir Rahman Raheem so that their hole stays closed. You don't find them and say, hey, <laughs> say Bismillah Rahman Raheem, <laughs> they're gonna come out. So that's not the, 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 the solution to understanding the last days was the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that, Ya Musabbibul Asbab, that Allah is causing this condition and He wants you Mufati Abwaab, you should be scared. Are you scared? Yes, run to Prophet So this conditions that Allah puts us in. There's a door he wants us to run to and that's then run when they're oppressors to themselves, jauka, that they should be running into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.